the last 24 hours, we've seen uh, attacks by um, not only drones, uh, probably about 18 of them, uh, also a ballistic missile and two anti-ship cruise missiles. Uh, they've been fired against uh, merchant shipping and warships in the southern part of the Red Sea, where, a place we call the Bab al Mandeb. It's not sure whether they were targeting the ships directly or just firing them generally in the hope they might hit something. Uh, as it was, um, 14 of them were shot down by the United States Navy, either uh, the three destroyers that are on station or F-18 Super Hornets from the carrier Eisenhower, and seven by uh, uh, the Royal Navy's HMS Diamond with its Sea Viper system. HMS Diamond has a very sophisticated uh, radar uh, detection system. Um, it's got a, a main radar that can detect uh, all sorts of contacts, hundreds of them out to about 400 kilometers. Uh, and it's got a very sophisticated fire control system that, that allocates targets to 48 of its uh, Asta 15 or Asta 30 missiles. They've got slightly different ranges. Um, the ship itself can also uh, use um, its Vulcan Phalanx uh, Gatling gun, which fires up to 600 rounds a minute if any of the uh, targets come close to it. And it's also got a range of uh, high volume fire small caliber weapons as well. It's probably one of the best uh, anti-air platforms uh, in the world alongside uh, the United States uh, Aegis destroyers, three of which are on station with her in the, uh, in the Southern Red, Red Sea. So the aim of the Houthis is to uh, impose costs on those countries that are either tacitly or actively supporting Israel. Uh, what they're doing is interrupting international trade through an international strait um, and hoping uh, that will put pressure on both uh, the free world economies, uh, but also the governments uh, of the countries concerned. Uh, and we've seen already that three major container uh, companies are going via the Cape instead of via the Suez Canal. Uh, quite a lot of the oil and gas that comes our way uh, is going via the Cape as well. It's significant, of course, that quite a lot of the merchant shipping that is supporting China and the totalitarian states isn't affected. And we have to see this within the broader context of the confrontation that we're seeing in the world today between the totalitarian states of Russia, China, Iran and North Korea and, and the free world. Uh, and if you accept, as I do, that uh, all four countries are pushing onto their neighbours, Russia onto Ukraine, uh, Iran into the greater Middle East, China in the South and East China Sea, and I think very shortly North Korea will start pushing on South Korea, you'll see it's part of a general trend to put the international system and the free world's operation of that system under pressure and under threat. I think right now the uh, ships in the Red Sea, the warships are coping pretty admirably with the threat. I think as soon as you get an indication uh, that those warships might be uh, overwhelmed by the threat, then you're going to see immediate strike action against uh, elements of the command system of the Houthi rebels and also their military capability uh, as well. I think over time, uh, I think the international community is going to lose patience with the Houthis as well. But one thing you can't do is keep threatening you're going to do it uh, and then not do it. Um, uh, at the moment, you've got an American strike carrier there. Uh, between uh, the carrier and her battle group, they've got over 600 missiles. Uh, and possibly even more if you add a submarine uh, into that mix as well. There's nearly always a nuclear submarine in the vicinity of a carrier strike group, and I would expect that to take part in the attacks as well. You've also got the full air group, of course, uh, in the Eisenhower, uh, and a range of other options from bases in the Gulf and more widely. Well, the worst case scenario is that uh, one of the warships is hit or the defences uh, are overwhelmed by the sheer numbers of the drones. I mean, one thing that's worth mentioning is the cost ratios here. These drones are pretty cheap. Uh, some of the missiles are pretty cheap and the missiles that are being used to shoot them down uh, are pretty expensive. So it's not a great cost ratio. We've seen the guns used. We've seen aircraft from uh, uh, the Eisenhower used as well. But what's really interesting about this uh, situation, we're going to see an acceleration, I believe, uh, of the introduction of directed energy weapons. What well, you and I might call laser weapons. They're already being trialed, they're successful at sea with the United States Navy, and I think you'll see 
uh, a situation where these are rapidly introduced now to deal with this type of threat in future. Just give you an example. If you shot down one of these targets with a laser, uh, it would cost you probably $20. Uh, uh, and you'd have a lot of shots, uh, probably up to two or 300 in, in the sort of tank that generates that. The United States Navy already has several working systems uh, at sea. Uh, they've demonstrated a really good capability. Um, I think there was a progressive launch of this type of system. The Israelis were already using it, um, in fact, uh, to try and shoot down uh, some of the Hamas and Hezbollah rockets. And I think over the next three to five years, you're going to see a progressive introduction of these systems in order to deal with this type of threat.